Good morning. And welcome to Faith Lutheran Church here in Valley City, North Dakota for Rally Sunday. Woo. <laughs> Does anybody know why we call it Rally Sunday? I have no idea. I'm just asking. I, but welcome, everybody. Uh, if you've been gone during the summer, we'll welcome uh, here. We're going to say hi to each other. Today we're wearing name tags. So I'm going to have you say hi to the people next to you, but call them by name. So hi, Rick. Hi, Jan. Ready? Go. Say hi to everybody. There you go. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Mary. Hi. Very good. <laughs> no, everybody by name. I don't think we're going to be able to stop them. I think just... Okay. Well, now you know everybody by name. Good job. A uh, couple of announcements today, if you haven't read them all uh, already. Uh, Steve and Karen Nitschke are here today at Coffee. They're going to be moving to Jamestown. Let's all go. Should we celebrate or say? Okay, yeah, there you go. Where are you? So we'll miss you, but uh, we'll celebrate them at, at Coffee today. Also, our kids are starting Sunday school today. We have a uh, jumpy house outside. It's only for kids. No adults, right? So, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. A um, couple other things that are coming up. This Wednesday, we're having an orientation meeting for confirmation students from 7th to 9th with their parents. This year, if you didn't know, all three Lutheran churches in town, Our Saviors, Trinity, and uh, Faith here, we're all doing confirmation together. It's a cool program. Get ready. We're going to have fun. Last thing, you're all invited to share in the Sacrament of Holy Communion. If you don't know already, when you come forward... When you take a chalice, if you want grape juice, you can get the little pink one. If you'd like gluten-free bread, when you come up, just tell us you want gluten-free. Everybody got it? Okay, just waiting for everybody to come in. Hey, Kent. Okay, <clears throat> okay let's uh, take a second here to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let us begin our worship this morning on September 11th in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in our call to worship. Let us come together on this rally Sunday to follow Jesus. Come follow the one who never gives up on us. Come join the journey of Jesus today. Our gathering song is You're Worthy of My Praise. It's uh, kind of a, what do you call it? Sing back and forth. Around, okay. So, echo song. So here we go. Ready? You can stand. I will worship with all of my heart. With all of my heart. I will praise you. I will praise you. With all of my strength. All my strength. I will seek you. I will seek you.
Each Sunday we come together not only to praise God, but also to admit to ourselves, to each other, and to God that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We are not perfect. And we do that together as a community. So I'm going to invite you, along with myself, to confess our sin and then hear the words of forgiveness. Gracious Lord God, we confess that we are lost. We have failed to love you and our neighbors as ourselves. We admit that we are broken and wounded people seeking to find a path back to you. Have mercy upon us, Lord, as you gather us back into your fold. Our song of mercy is returned to God. now these words of forgiveness for you. Through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the lost has been found, and all of heaven and earth rejoice in the fact that you are an accepted, forgiven, and loved child of God. It didn't sound like you really meant that. So, Repeat after me, I am an accepted, forgiven, and love child of God. I am an accepted, forgiven, and love child of God. I am an accepted, forgiven, and love child of God. Very good. Let's sing songs of praise for that fact. Please stand and let's sing Alle, Alle, Alleluia. Now I know the kids know this because Wendy knew it. So sing out, kiddos. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good job. Prayer of the day. Let us pray. O oh God, overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourselves all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care, that we may reject whatever is contrary to you and may follow all things that sustain our life in your Son. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated, and kids, come up here. I have something for you, so come on up. Come, come, come. Come sit right here. That's good. Yep. <laughs> Finn. Yeah, you can sit right in the middle here. Can you sit between the balloons? Can you fit in there? Okay, ready? Ready? Oh, I forgot. What? Usually, what do I give you when you usually come up here? Yeah, I have a candy bag and I lost it. Um, so, we got to find it. So, here's what we're going to do. 
Um, let's spread out. You guys go start looking for the candy bag. Everybody out here, look under your seat. Look over here. Where's the candy bag? I lost the candy bag. Could be back here. Over here. Maybe here. Is it under here? No, yes. Where? You see it anywhere? Well, maybe it's over here. I don't know. Come on out this way. Finn, go look for the candy bag. Mm. What are we going to do? Yeah. What? You found it? I spy. Oh, I spy. <laughs> Oh, thank God we found it. Holy cow. Let's get my hand. Good job. Oh, I thought we were going to have to go without candy today. Holy cow. Good job, you guys. So Jesus today talks about being lost and being found, and no matter where you go, God will come and find you. And so here's some candy. Take candy. Here's one here. Try to do this. Oh, oh. Okay, everybody get one? No. You want one by? I got one. Everybody got one? I got one. You didn't get one? I'm sure glad you found it, because if you didn't, we wouldn't get any candy today. So we're going to thank Jesus for uh, having us find our candy today. So, here, you want one? You didn't get one? Very good. Okay, so... With your candy in your hand, fold your hands with your candy in there, ready? And we're going to pray, so repeat after me. Let's try it. Repeat after me. That's what you're supposed to say, okay? Ready? Dear Jesus, thank you for candy and for us finding it today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good job. Hopefully you won't lose anything of yours. See you later. Have fun today. Oh, there's some bulletins here for you guys to color on. Right here. Everybody take one. Take one and eat. Sure. Take one and eat. Take one and eat. You got them? Okay. Now let us hear... The Word of God. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom brought you up out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath. Change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people." Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own selves, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. The response of reading is from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. For I know my offenses. 
Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness. Indeed, you delight in truth within, truth deep within me. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Let me hear joy and gladness. Hide your face from my sins. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. A reading from 1 Timothy. I am grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me, faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a prosecutor, and a man of violence, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy so that in me as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. According to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulder and rejoices. And when he comes home, he gathers together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that it was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than other, the other 99 righteous who need no repentance. Or... What woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I, that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of the Lord. You, Please be seated. Once again, welcome to Rally Sunday. Um, we're gonna talk, let's talk about being lost, okay? Being lost. When I first started out as a pastor, I started out in a small rural town where 90-some 90, 90 percent of the people were farmers. Flandreau, South Dakota. Anybody, there's a casino there. Okay. Uh, it's on the way to Sioux Falls. So back in the day, before we had GPS, we had these things called maps. And you used to have to unfold them. You remember these? I actually tried to go to several places to find a fold-out map. They don't have them anymore. 
anybody has one of those, hoo-hoo, because they don't exist anymore. <laughs> but a lot of times when people invite me to their house, and if you've ever grown up, grown up in a small town, you know how this goes. They'll go, okay, so go on Highway 75 north till you get to where Johnson's Barn used to be, and then you take that, you know, right, they tell you these directions that they know, that people in that community know, but if you're new to that community, you never know where they are. And so I used to get lost all the time. Now I want you to think about that feeling just for a second, the physical feeling of driving and getting lost. My dad, when he was 93 years old, still was driving, and we tried really hard to take his car away from him, but you know how that goes. And uh, he would only drive from his apartment to church and back, right? And one day, he was driving, it's two miles, he stopped at a light, and he didn't know where he was. He was lost. And he came and gave us his keys after that. Okay, now I want you to think about this feeling of what it means to be lost. So in Jesus' day, people were lost, okay? They were turning in on each other. Um, in Jesus' day, his people were occupied by the Roman government. It would be sort of like if China and Russia decided to get together and came to America and took over. And they put us in, kind of like reservations, but they, they put us in gatherings where we could still live, live our lives, but they would have armed guards there, they would always be there. And in order for the society to maintain itself, they would get people to help them, like snitches or narcs or whatever you want to call them. And so they would go around and they would have people um, help them keep control. And so they had tax collectors. These are the people that would collect the tax to go back to the Roman government. So they would come to your house, they would take so much tax from you, and they would skim some of it off the top. So people thought they were kind of bad. The Pharisees and the scribes were religious, political leaders, and they had to keep, you know, the peace. And so they would talk to the Romans, and they were kind of in on it too, to keep people in line. And so today's gospel, you hear the, the political, the religious leaders saying um, to the tax collectors, look at them, they are sinners. They even have a word they call, look at these sinner people. And they say it back. So what happens is people start to turn in on each other. They start to point the finger at each other. And Jesus says they're lost. So how is Jesus going to try to figure out to, how to get to these people uh, to tell them and to show them that they're lost. Well, Jesus has this reputation of stirring things up. He'll come into a, to a, a neighborhood or a community, and all of a sudden, he'll just start disrupting things. He distracts them from the things that are distracting them from who they are, the people of God. He sees that they're divided. And so what he does is he eats. Okay, now... Here's a definition for me of a friend. A friend is somebody that has come over or you've gone out to eat with, right? There's something about eating. Um, and throughout the Bible, it's a major theme. He comes and eats with the people they call sinners, the people that they're pointing the finger at, the people who that culture has determined are the worst, are the least, the last, the lost, and Jesus eats with them. Now, he has just eaten with a bunch of um, winner-type political figures, and now he eats with them, and they can't figure out, why are you doing this? Why don't you just eat with and be with those people that are respectable, those people who are higher in society? But instead, he eats with the least, last, and the lost. And that really makes them mad, because they like to point fingers. In order for us to feel good about ourselves, to feel like we're winners, there has to be a loser. There has to be someone that you point to. And so Jesus just messes that all up. And he says, you're off track. And I'm going to tell you a couple stories. And he tells two stories about being lost and found. The first story is about a, a shepherd who loses his sheep, okay? Now, just think about this for a second, okay? The only job a shepherd has is to watch his sheep. That's it. That's the only job he has. And for some reason, one of the sheep wanders off and gets lost. And it's because not the fault of the sheep, but it's the fault of the shepherd. And so this shepherd in the story is kind of nervous about people finding out. He doesn't want people to know that the sheep is gone, and so he runs out and tries to find the one sheep, leaving the 99 behind. That's the first 
story of being lost. The second story is about a woman who has a coin. Now again, coins don't get lost by themselves, right? The woman loses the coin, and it's a precious coin, and so she searches high and low everywhere she can find to find that coin, and then finally finds it. Now in both cases, right, when they find what is lost, they celebrate, they rejoice, they're with other people, they, they um, throw a party, and the point is that when the lost is found, we celebrate. Now here's the quintessential question for you today, for all of us, is when do you feel the most lost? When do you feel the most lost in your life? You know, as I, I scroll through Facebook and Instagram, Snapchat, there's a lot of lostness. There are a lot of people searching for something and feeling like they're lost. And my question is, why is it so hard for us to figure out what direction we're supposed to go? What, what is it about us that just makes that so hard? I was sitting out uh, on our little deck by our house the uh, day before yesterday, and some geese were flying by, and they were flying so close that I, you could hear the flaps of their wings. You ever been that close to them? It's really kind of cool. And they're flying over the house, and I'm, I'm starting to think, well, where are they going? Now, when, f- when geese fly south, I think they try to fly until they find the first open water, and that's where they settle in. And when they come back in the spring, they come back to the same place they were born, right? And they're like two or 3,000 miles away, but somehow, some way, they find... How do they do that? You ever wonder that? How do, how, do, how do they find exactly the direction to go? And why can't we as humans, be that directed to? What is so tough for us to figure out what direction to go? Well, we get distracted. We get distracted by the values, the ways, the, um, the ongoings of the world and how things are done here, and we forget from where which we come. Jesus says that this is not our home, <laughs> that we have come from someplace else called the kingdom of God, And Jesus says, I'm going to give you a map. I'm going to try to show you how to get back to the kingdom. And he gives us a hint, a clue, and he says, look to the least, the last, and the lost. Not only as people, but in your own lives, where are you the least, the last, and the lost? It's called looking at places of death looking at places of the cross. Jesus came into the world, salvation came to us, not by winning, but through the cross, through death. And that's what we hold up. And so he says, I'm going to give you a hint. This is where you look to find your salvation. This is where you look to find what he outlined today in his two parables as joy. If you want to experience joy, look in those places Look to those people. Look in the places that he would call the cross. And this is the paradox of faith. God meets us in death. God meets us in the least, the last, and the lost. I'll give you an example. And I've told you this before. The difference between weddings and funerals. Weddings come and everybody's trying to celebrate and everything's trying to do exactly how everybody has planned and it never works and everybody's grumpy. You've heard of Bridezilla. It's true. (laughs) But then there's funerals, and people are unexpected there, and they're sad, they're lost, they're they're feeling their cross moment. And it's in those moments that I have far more better conversations, heart-filled, from the soul, with those people. And once you experience death, you're able to experience life. Jesus disrupts society. He comes into our normalness, our politeness, our niceties, into our culture, and he paints us a picture of which direction we're to go. To not avoid, doesn't the world do this? Not to avoid those places of least, last, and lost, and death, but to go to those places and know that that's where life grows. It grows in those dark places. And we're not to avoid them. That's the irony behind the whole thing. The least, the last, and the lost. Jesus eats and associates with the least, the last, and the lost 
to, to make a point. He's drawing us a map a map of what life is about and who he is. He's pointing us to a place that one day we'll all go back to, where there won't be the least last and lost and death, a place called the kingdom of God. Today, I want you to think about those places in your life where you feel lost and know this. God seeks the lost. God will never give up searching for those places in your life And God is a faithful God that will meet you in those places where you're lost. Let us pray. Gracious God, for those places where we're lost, where we feel like there's no direction, where we don't know what to do next, we pause and we remember that that's where you meet us. We thank you for your son meeting us on a cross. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. faith. We believe in God, the one who comes before us and goes behind us, creating life and opportunities to love and care for the world. We believe in Jesus Christ, the one who walks with us into real life each day. He is God, yet human like us, and who has experienced all of life's joys, pains, and challenges like we do. But his love is so great that not sin, nor suffering, nor even death could stop it. Today, the love of Jesus continues to extend mercy to strangers and compassion to the forgotten. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the one who comes like the wind and blows in and through us, the body of Christ we call the church, to enable us to follow Christ. We believe in God, who goes before and behind, with, in, and through us, bringing hope and life to all the world.
Would you bow your heads with me for a word of prayer? Gracious Lord God, your grace and mercy overflow into our lives. We ask, Lord, that you'd fill us with a love which passes all understanding. Strengthen us and our community to open the doors to include the least, the last, and the lost. We pray, Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, your world is shattered and nations rage. As we remember the darkness of 9-11, give us the peace that you can only give. Peace in our world, peace in our homes, peace in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord God, we give you thanks for the harvest, for the food that is provided by those who work the land. Lord, we ask that you would be diligent with us as we help the world fill their tables, bless our tables with the food to share with others. We pray, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Lord God, your children wander and are searching for a home. Some of them are hungry and they cry for bread. Some of them are homeless and they're looking for a home. Some of them are lost, lonely, anxious, or depressed, struggling with addiction or illness. Lord, provide them with your grace and know that they are found, we pray, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, for the work which is done through this place, Faith Lutheran Church, May we be your hands, feet, voices, and minds, and heart. Build up all the ministries here in Valley City, and that we may serve na our neighbor and welcome the stranger in your name, we pray, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And gracious God, we pause for a moment of silence to offer up to you our personal prayer petitions today. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. It is into your hands, O Lord, that we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the peace of the Lord. Peace. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> Peace, Marks. God's peace. 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 Peace.
drives. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord took bread he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said take and eat this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin, do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table of grace is now set. You are all invited to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Please be seated, and come forward to the direction of your ushers. Oh 